What is going on, guys? It's the Knivesman. We are back. We are rising from the ashes, and we got new blood here today and every day. It is going to be my boy Lanning and Riley joining me. I am One Knife Paul, and we are bringing it to you. Gentlemen, how are we doing? We're yeah. doing. Can't complain. We're doing. I got the sick children downstairs, so I'm just in my little bubble in my room here. So you're, you're hiding out from the sick kids, and Riley's yep. planting a flag in the ground today. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Fellas, it is an honor to have a new crew of solid dudes, and I want to start things off real quick if we can. Um, we're just going to do a quick pocket dump. And let's just get to that you know what i'm just gonna click this button and see who goes first oh damn it <laughs> okay so i'm going first on the wrist we got a, a gwa 1000 that's an old school g-shock aviator and in the pocket because spring has sprung i've got two in the pocket today i've got the uh kershaw link and also a freshly strapped up kershaw dividend nice an M390, a beautiful dividend from a good friend. So that's in my pocket. Let's see what's in Landing's pocket today. Well, we'll start on the wrist because you did, right? So I've got the so sure. uh, Long Island Watch, Islander ISL, I believe this is the 45 with the steel bracelet. Uh, it's a automatic with a Seiko movement. Love these, uh, a properly priced Seiko, if I will. Yes. Um, <laughs> around the neck, I've got a uh, Tops. Uh, it's the mini Tanimboko Puko. This thing is like the best uh, letter opener ever. That is cute it's as hell. I love it. Nano Scandi grind. Yeah, this thing is crazy. Uh, my card of handles with red liners. I don't know, maybe I got to work on my lighting here. Awesome sheath. Uh, just kind of goes in and rides like this. Um, really cool. Um, for my pocket knife, I've got my uh, G10 and M4 bug out. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I'm going the wrong way here. Absolutely love this thing. Yes. <clears throat> and then I've got my tactile turn brass. Uh, this is the full size bolt. I uh, use the uh, G2 um, refills. And then I always keep uh, field notes. I try to, uh, instead of tweeting or putting my every thought, oh, there goes Piper. Hold on here. Piper. <laughs> She's not in my pocket. She's just annoying. You've um, got an annoying kitty. Yeah, yeah. I always try. So whenever I feel like I need to post something to Facebook or tweet, I just tend to write it down here because I don't think anybody really cares what I have to say. So <laughs> not not depressing ways. I'm just saying you don't want to know what's in my mind. So <laughs> if anything sinister happens, I'm involved. Look We're going to find that book. Hey, and look for these in my us. house. You'll probably figure it out. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, kid. How's it going, brother? Nice that you joined us. Are you, are you done there? Sorry. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, Riley, let's show, see what's in your pockets, buddy. All right, start out with the wrist as well. Yeah. Uh, Pro Master Navajo Citizen. Two aviators. Yeah, I love this thing. Uh, love the fact, never have to Ooh. set the time, just Dude. never have to worry about it. They come in other colors now, and I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> they look awesome. Yeah. Uh, these things are addictive. Don't buy a Citizen unless you want to buy three. I can promise you because I have two and I want another one. So agreed, mm -hmm. agreed. Um, <laughs> they are they are worse than knives in my opinion as far as addiction goes. Uh, pin, tactile turn, Helix limited edition. I just like this thing whenever I don't have any, you know, because all my other pins are kind of dedicated to a color and a, you know what I mean. So yeah, this so you have only, a nice like, kind of neutral one. That's is yours yeah. brass as well? Uh, no, it's titanium. Oh yeah, it's just hard to tell with the color. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I have a That's for some reason we have a ye uh, more yellow light in here. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> and in pocket knife, nine forty-five. Mini. Oh, the mini. Really, it's like the the one with the purple backspace. Or I mean, honestly, I, I like the, that more the than mini, the big right? one. Yeah, yep. the mini Osborne nine forty-five. Awesome. Yeah, it's a good little knife. I mean, you know, something just. Not really doing much this weekend, just hanging around the house. So don't really need a full size, large knife. And uh, Surefire uh, Stiletto Pro yes. is pretty much kind of always in my pocket now. 
I don't, uh, anybody want to buy some old lights? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have a couple of SR1s for sale. Um, yeah, I like this guy. It's a little bit more expensive, but you know what? Better the light. pocketability of that versus a cylinder Which, in your pocket is yeah. why I love the wedge as well. And I know that's why Landing likes it. Yeah, I carry I mean, a wedge so much every day. It's all, yeah. I mean, but there's a slightly different tone. I mean, maybe I need to do a video that shows that beside a SR1 because maybe you should and you could room, upload it to the channel you know what i mean and and the, but they have a different tone of light so can you I show, the, can the, you show the body part. of that again the sr1 i just want to take a look i just had a hard time seeing it the first time no the, yeah this the, the letter sure fire yeah that's pretty wicked can you just kind of turn i just turn it to yeah see. oh i'm gonna have to yeah you know what i think they're a couple bucks but yeah get, i don't care as soon as this shows get, over uh, i'm gonna go online and uh yeah. get in trouble again that's it yeah. you actually get it's a good. better and it's logo. also got a little tail switch for the you know oh, the momentary sick. on and then you know with the strobe oh damn yeah like i love my wedge i carry it yeah. as a secondary light for work every day i have my main, my main light on my belt but that's wicked look that's really cool i want to get one of yeah. those it's another great thing and i think a lot of light companies are going to follow suit in yeah, this nice pocketable it. thinner package with a pocket yeah. clip that is usable yeah, with deep it's way less obtrusive yeah well that's it right yeah any any o light i have period yeah no, that's, that's, even a, that's a curse word around me people are like oh i like the s1r baton that's like it's a little chode but it's still yeah. the cylinder if you were to pocket clip it whereas yeah. the wedge and that stiletto are nice and even though they're a little bit thick but the thinness and the spread out girth makes them yeah. nicer right i will give uh o light this because the main advantage to the sr1 is it's hattable because well, that's right yeah with the double-ended clip, clip yes. your hat and you can go over or under well, that, hey, people people were like giving Olay for so much praise on that stuff when Phoenix yeah. has done it for a long time as well. Yeah. So I'm any having Phoenix a hard time light here. usually has the reversibles as well. I'm looking well, at SR1. What who makes the SR1? Olay. And it's the cylinder. The yeah, little short one. The cylinders. The, the S1 Why R did that baton. Not look like, oh, it didn't look like a cylinder on screen. The one that you're carrying, what is that? No, that's a, this is a, a surefire stiletto. That's what I that's what I need to look at. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and the next one I'm getting, I think I already told you, Paul. There it is. Mm -hmm. the, I don't even remember the model number of it, but it's the freaking laser. What is it? The TK? TK. The Phoenix TK 20 or 50 or something. It's 30, a white laser. I thought it was 35 beam. or something or 25 or something like that. But it's, it's a white, awesome. it's a class three laser. White laser. Yeah. Things are ridiculous. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Who makes that? Uh, That's Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah, I carry a Phoenix U, uh, UC thirty five as my as my duty this, as my duty light that sits on my, on my, on my that yeah, sits on my utility belt. Phoenix, and I love that light, but <laughs> it'll pop yeah, right I, up. I got the uh, PD thirty six R in the truck for my pre and post trips. That thing's a beast. But I was, okay, I was TK thirty. Like, Maybe I'll get the forty. Ooh, that's expensive. The PD thirty six R. Yeah, no, it's, it is white. no it's it's TK thirty laser. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the laser. It's sick. Yeah, it's white. Yes. Look at that lens at the you end. You can't use it in close proximity; it'll blind you. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the whole point. Already. If I'm using it, it's probably <laughs> in a defensive per, for a defensive reason. Now that's the first time I've ever heard it being used properly. <laughs> like, if, yeah. Well, no, because I mean, I mean in addition great. to like my cuffs and my you know yeah. my baton yeah. and my spray, if I can use something that's completely non-invasive as far as physical, that's right. Uh, you know, if I a class three laser yeah. to the face is going to back somebody up quick enough, right? That's exactly it. Especially yeah. if that thing strobes. My God, <laughs> <laughs> they get LASIK surgery for <laughs> free. Be awesome. <laughs> uh, that would be fucking crazy gentlemen do you want to get into our show of the day so yeah. anybody watching yeah. and we appreciate all of them uh here's the show of the day we have a triple mystery knife unboxing sent to us by a wonderful viewer and uh they wanted us to uh unbox and first impressions and uh, uh we're gonna do that for them we're also going to cover some spring carry options. We're going to talk a little bit, show a couple things, and uh, mailing abroad. I mean, and we'll talk about that. what that is is mostly, yeah, mostly that is uh, from the states to Canada. What you might want to talk to uh, your, you know, seller of what they could or could not do to try to get it across. And if we have time, we'll cover Landing's review of the Spider Coast stove pipe. So, gentlemen. Shall we uh, engage in boxly activities? Yeah. 
It's like three so kids on Christmas. We've each got a box here, and we're going to uh, open said box. Just to make sure that the address is not shown on screen here. I'm just doing okay. off screen. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Amateur. Oh no. Wait, wait, wait. I don't. I didn't look yet. I seen the brand. <laughs> you know what? I haven't said I'm much looking. about this brand, but oh, I've never wow. had one in my oh, yes. hands. Right? This is exciting for me. Yeah. I've it's wanted to wood. have one of these in my hands for so long. It's wood. to curse. So, oh, this so is what we got. Let, let, sorry, I'm sorry. Let, let uh, Riley get that out. Don't open it just yet. Don't open oh. it all. Okay. Don't open it all. I'm, I'm, Riley, no, I've got, I've got like the box. Yeah. I've got the sleeve so, off of the box. Yeah, we do have the sleeve off. And we've got a little felt cover. So yeah, let's open her up. This is a So we can open now? Yeah, yeah, let's open it up, boys. This is the a little uh song. Oh my god. I'm, this is exciting. This is actually very exciting. This is Oh yeah. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> this is this so is cool. It. So so here's, here's 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 what I have to ask real quick. This is like a real funny so Riley, you're yeah. gonna be okay that there's like an opening hole in the blade, right? He's not against yeah. opening holes. He's just against Spyderco looking all the same. Okay. Oh, it's actually. Oh, this is cool. It's actually pretty nice. Riley, that, is that um, all titanium? Who's the collaborator there? That's uh, no, it's it... G10. Oh, okay. Oh, gray G10. We got black G10. I've got yeah. green on mine. You got this green. Is... You got green G10. I got G black G10 with a green aluminum. Looks like black spacer and lanyard hole. What do you got, landing? Is it all? Just I've black? got uh, black G10 with a black blade this thing is oh black when, when, black. when they he talk about the DLC, flat that's line, what it was one of yes. them dlc look at this yeah. the dlc and it's like you talk about flat grind this thing Holy is a laser oh i'm sorry bug out but you're not going to be carried for a little while this is so this is amazing this is in the truck this week boys this, this is in is the it. pocket We're this is coming review. this is so cool <laughs> We're gonna give the review in a oh week and a half or two weeks. Or... That's a beautiful little knife. I'm I'm actually surprised by the brand. I really cast it off as like a hipster brand. Oh, here it says no. You know what? That has been dispelled by quite a few reviewers out there prior to this today. See, I don't that, watch. I don't watch a lot, but I make it. I make the reviews, <laughs> and that's yeah, that's cool. This is exciting. So to the viewer that sent these to us, this is this. Thank you very very much from the bottom of our hearts. We very much appreciate these, and these are going to get used like knives should be used. We're going to see what it can do. Obviously, this is not a, a heavy-duty knife, but it's going to get very used. And I mean, with a, with a blade that thin, um, hell of a slicer, slicer right away. It's already going to well, be a really here's nice Here's the thing. Carry. Here's, I just want to say carry. this real quick. Can I just interject for a second? In my yeah. you know, the, Our viewers are going to know that I speak way too much, but <laughs> this, like, you know, when this brand came out, I think there was that a bit of that kind of hipster polarization I, and i think the stigma. way yeah it was almost like it was almost like initially it was like marketed like mvmt watches and like uh what's that yeah. other brand that's like that makes those that little micro round brand watches. type of stuff but it but these are these are legit and and you know what here's the thing the if you look and I, you're gonna be probably gonna be better at this riley probably too that symbol that's a collaborate who is the maker that's that blink that? blink blades isn't it ah uh, no oh. Hold i on. know they have a cat is it something no, 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 stickers no, no, no. that are inside there? There's a sticker, Folsom. VG10. Uh, no, Dra Drapelin. Oh, we have, what am I thinking, Blink Blade? I was like, it has a cat. Oops, it says VG10 or Damascus. You may have got a Damascus. G10 micarta with black micarta. Clip. It's got deep carry clip. Or black micarta. Yeah, you know what? bronze washers. Yeah. Perfect. Who's gonna read their? Uh, are we gonna? Because you get the. No, 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 no. Uh, do, do you want to read all that or? or, or no, I, mean, I mean, this is this is on the James website. I'm. I guess it's. Uh, oh. But it's good for us to know, especially for our review. So it is. Uh, I'll give the basics. It's a VG10. <laughs> Look at that deep carry. Yep, super super deep carry clip on it. Okay, so they thought about that. The uh, fit and finish on it is actually uh, really nice. At first, first glimpse, super nice. Um, but 
<laughs> yeah, three kids yeah, at yeah. Christmas, kid. Oh, that's man, exactly. This is like, really, it's, really nice. it's it's a really nice nice little knife. I mean, to the person so who yeah, sent this. Length, yeah, this is very this is a very up. thoughtful purchase. Thank you, whoever to the person sent this. That's it. And, and you know what? I like small knives because look, this is an XL hand, and I get my pinky behind, which is right where I usually would do it on a smaller knife. Hey, the blade is centered. So, who would have guessed it? That's another thing. I I mean, it's dead center. Riley, yours? Yours is all good? Oh. Yeah. So three randoms. So thank you so much to the viewer that did this. This was super thoughtful and a hell of a gift. I mean, so we might even be back next week to give a little review on this. We'll see. We might give it the two weeks. We got a little sticker with it as well. We got the Yames brand and uh, we got a little spiel. I think that, that's a beautiful little presentation. I'm a, I'm a bit speechless. Well. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is a nice, nice little knife. Yep. This is going to be great for EDC stuff. 100%. I, I, I'm excited yep. to use it. I would carry this for work. And I probably, you know what, I'm going to carry this because it's... I am, I am as well. This is going to be my sole carry in the truck. So, yep. thank you so, so much. <clears throat> yep. That's all so, well. that was the legendary triple threat unboxing of the <sighs> mystery knife. Now it is no longer a mystery a james Folsom, the james brand Folsom, and that's a that's a really nice yeah, i wonder if I've it was named looked... after the prison <laughs> it could have been <laughs> yeah. oh my god this is power, so thin <laughs> yeah it's incredibly thin and it's it bg10 it's which means gonna make pretty for... much do anything that's with it and not even care it's gonna be a bloody razor blade at this thickness like this is thinner than a delica anything else i've used bg10 in really like it is incredibly thin do you feel that detent? Is yeah. that is your guys' detent like super strong? Like it pops and then it's smooth. Uh, uh, yep. Wow, Get that's a, like... night, a beautiful little detent on it. Oh, I can pop crazy. it. I can pop it right yeah, out the yeah. box, and I mean, it's not super sharp in the opening hole or anything. Great finish on it. I just want to look at it. So this is a yeah, this is a DLC, I believe, <laughs> on this one. Blade thickness 0.11 of an inch, so 2.8 mil. That's uh, that's a really thin blade, and that's nice. That's gonna make a hell of a slicer. Well, that's the thing. You don't need something super tough if it's ground properly and has the good has a good profile. Well, that's it. Yeah, I mean, you just don't want to go cutting through, you know, inch and a half zip ties or something. With it. I mean, you could. Well, no, the again, right tool for gonna, <laughs> We get knives like this. We're going to use them appropriately for right. the tasks that it no, was designed right. for, right? It's like you can't expect to take this and baton through uh, a three-inch block of wood trying to make firewood. Oh, generate. kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> that was one well, knife, dude. And, it was, and I had to. <laughs> anyway. Don't make me start calling you Wrangle Star. That guy's ridiculous. <laughs> no. No, oh, it was, dude. It was yeah, a me too situation. When they, when they start <laughs> using things for things that they're not meant for, yeah. yeah, it defeats the purpose, right? You buy a knife with a certain use in mind and you buy the appropriate knife that you want to use it for. What? You know? And wow, that was kind of the appropriate knife if ever there was one. Yeah. But let's say compared to the thinness of the bug out. So I don't know if you can really see that on the screen. So this is the G10 bug out versus that. And then so people can kind of see compare you know how some oh, yeah, reviewers do comparisons here. you know do uh blade size yeah it's it's a decent it's close comparison man. almost but, right? but look yeah, but the exact thing is, same size as it's the got a little bit more weight than the bug out but look at the size look if you go butt to butt like where they're butt to butt if they're like the same it's shorter yeah, you're getting no nope, you're getting but check touch. no but hear, hear me out right the knife is shorter right by a considerable amount but the cutting edge is about almost yeah you're getting a very close amount on the cutting edge so especially... yeah you're getting a more pocketable i mean i don't want to say more pocketable than the bug out because this is pretty much you know one of the kings right now but you're getting almost essentially a more Dude, this... pocketable knife yeah wow. things are identical to the 945. thanks guys all right well we'll never move on if we don't so this yeah is cool. so... and i like the box the packaging Let's... was actually really i i love well it. i like the felt on top of the wood it's kind of cute where's my yeah. wood where's my wood so we are we are wanting to cover some um spring a ling a ding carry options as well um the fulsome might fit that right off the bat although it's got a little bit of weight to it, a little bit of heft you know for being a small guy she's got some weight to her oh, here we go here's the box 
Yeah. Here's check this out. They even in the wood in the wood box yes. they put a, a felt insert to protect the clip during travel from getting scratched up. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. They definitely have their uh, packaging game down. I mean, you know, some people, they buy things just based on presentation. You know, I, I get a hinderer. It comes in a wooden box and a little bag. Who cares, right? But this is yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, the cardboard box. Cool. I know, right? You, you buy a hinderer cardboard for $500 plus, $600. $700 almost. It's a cardboard box. Cardboard like, box, cardboard box with a this? plastic dime yeah. bag in and, it. You know, uh, <laughs> in an eighth the price, and you get a nice little wood insert with the little protected clip thing and the little felt on top. It's a nice little presentation. I think it's yeah, going to be cool. fun and interesting to use. This is cool, man. So, gentlemen, this... let's let's move it along. Okay. Let's let's cover spring has sprung, and uh, we're getting into the nicer weather. We're shedding the clothing. Uh, we're losing the big coats, and that means we're losing a lot of pockets. Yeah. So, what kind of stuff are we aiming for coming this season? What are we going to be carrying? What kind of knives are we packing? Right. Well, I think oh, I think all three of us have to just hold up. It's like the number one choice out of out of the boys. Well, I don't know. Riley Riley's got a few that might be a little different, but yeah, that's it. You know, we uh, we're, we're all with bug outs here. I mean, I, I I'll just keep playing. I'm a lefty, so of course mine looks backwards. The screen is fine. I'm just uh... <laughs> no, it, it, his screen is backwards. Um, lefties <laughs> are the tool of the devil. Like even this aluminum scale version. Like I mean, these are the devil's minions. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't beat a bug out, especially yeah. True. that light grivery, the G10, the CF man. Yeah, no. it, it, it's an unbelievable package, and I've said it for quite a while. If you know the theory behind the knife, and they want you to beat on it, you can. I don't know these people complaining about flex. How is that affecting your cut? Pay can attention I, can to what I, you're doing. Yeah. You know, you know, it's funny about that. And, and Paul, you and I were talking just prior to going live here is that people think that that flex is a bad thing. They don't realize that flex can be a good thing because that means that the forces that would normally transmit to your pivot are going elsewhere, you know? Yeah, and that, um, that's, that's exactly it. And we were talking about, you know, people equate light weight to less quality and, and, and that plastics are, you know, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, I hate to say it, carbon fiber and all and, and G10 and they're all plastics to me. I mean, I, you know, it's at the end of the day, uh, if, if lightweight was not a good thing, then the aerospace industry would not have <laughs> anything to talk about or produce for us. So well, honestly, you get into grivery and uh, G10, you're looking or sorry, uh, grivery uh, is the plastic end, whereas uh, you look at G10 and carbon fiber, you're getting into fiberglasses, right? Uh, so well, I'm just saying, at the end of the day. slightly different, but yes, it's the same package, right? Well, plus you're you got to go by the old materials. adage. You got to go by the old adage too: that which does not bend breaks. That's exactly it. Like so, uh, yeah. I mean, it happens. So yeah, yeah. having those lightweight packages, and they they went through it. They thought about this knife, and there's a reason it's so damn popular. You know, and if you and if you years. look at some of the other reviewers out there, you know, I was we were talking about uh, we were talking about um, Advanced Knife Bro. I mean, like he had a log, you know, a small. I don't know, you wouldn't call that a log, but about this big, and he spent, you know, I was probably two hundred hits and with one of the grivery ones through the log and broke it in half, oh. and the knife was fine. So I, I think people yeah. just get, get a theory in their brain, but it's never, it's not really practiced and. Well, that's, that's it. They didn't. They, thing, didn't you know? they go out and they they go. Oh, I can I can squish this together. It's not good. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, are you doing that when you're using the knife though? Are you doing yeah. that? And does this really affect how you're cutting? Are you cutting like this? Like you're not feeling that. No. You have to bear down. You can bear down. Benchmade engineered this with that in mind. That it was the like a sole backpack knife, a folder, not sole backpack knife. Yeah. But a, a backpack knife folder that you would take out into the wilderness and, and think about this like that benchmade is a you know multi-million dollar company it's existed as long as it does do you think that they drew the picture of the knife on a monday put the cad in on a wednesday and <laughs> sent it out into the stores on a friday i guarantee you there was some r&d that went behind that so huge amount you have to kind of have a little bit of faith in that but if you know at the end of the day look if you like a a, a thicker more robust knife for your needs then by all means, but when you and I are going to the beach this summer and my board shorts are around my waist and yours are hanging off, you're you're trying to keep pulling them up because you got to carry your strider to the beach and I'm just sitting there hanging and enjoying myself. You do you, man. You do well, you. Well, that's, that's it, right? And uh, you get a hell of a lot out of that lightweight package is the other thing. Oh, this that's is another one I carry oh, a lot. Here's, 
it's Ooh, a little so new, but I, I still had to switch the pocket clip around. Oh, that's that? your peach. That's your peach boker tool, isn't it? A yeah, tech tool. Peach boker peach tech color. Tool. Yeah, throw, I don't throw like your black light on it. Throw your black light on it for us. Look at this little this little slip joint, little boker tech tool, and this is the new scales. Oh, it's hard. Oh, and it's glowing. It gets that. Oh, what is this? Yeah, so it's orange. It's supposed to be it's orange, dark orange scales. What knife and is this? It's a boker what? Tech tool. I'm gonna check that out. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So this is the Tech Tool One, I think, because it's yeah. only got the single just, blade. They do come in Swiss blade. Army configurations, which yeah. I had one when they first came out. They have a clip, which is awesome. Yeah. So it's a Swiss Army knife with a clip, and they come with pliers, they come with scissors, they come with all the yeah. good stuff, and it's a really nice little knife. But the you number know? attached to the end of the name tells you how many tools it comes with. So I think yeah, tool yeah, it's a certain configuration comes with the number. So I think I had a tech tool five or something and it had pliers etc and yeah. it was a nice little tool right it's not high-end steel the same as a swiss army knife but they're nice little knives i'm you know? sorry boys i can't get over this thing i'm still playing with it i'm not ignoring you it's hard i know it's hard i'm like a brand <laughs> new knife and it's just sitting it. there on my other side I'm like, mm. you know i'm gonna be oh, i'm gonna be playing with my damn pocket <laughs> yeah i'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna like do that, that. Yeah. i stuck mine in my pocket <laughs> yeah and that's exactly where it's going after the show yeah man that's yep. it see you later kershaw link this yeah it's, this it's literally like as far as other than in my pocket. a little bit wider it's literally the exact same size as a 945. and check this out you want you guys yeah. see the low profile yeah you get no handle no no nothing yeah. stick it out there no scales this is how's awesome. that for pulling out though pull it out this <laughs> is she says it's easy ah. I mean, I did it wearing jogging pants <laughs> yeah it would be a nice easy pull too it's almost think. like the buck style but it's you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like in, I know what you're saying. It's, it's in, very similar, actually, to the uh, Buck Vantage I have. But it's it just overlaps, inserted but in but the back. But it actually has a gap. It's a slot in the backspacer. Yeah, it actually has a gap. It goes in through the backspacer, which is which is really neat. Well, okay, it's in my pocket. Now I can stop paying attention to it. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Good call. We're all yeah. pocketing the Folsom, everyone. So pay attention on IBEDC to that. And that's the Facebook group we're representing here with the Knivesmen. Um, so another another one speaking of buck a nice uh small shorts carry because sometimes you know it's a barbecue you might not need anything big i'm going to uh throw in the buck budgie into the ring this is a tiny little boy with the s35 vn frame lock little steel frame lock got the g10 jade scale on this one i did a little swap with the hardware i had an all black one and uh i mean this is a nice thin not super deep carrier nothing i mean it carries pretty pretty rough especially with that lanyard dealy oh. but uh another great lightweight small carry for uh getting into you know lighter weather you know um it's about i think 100 bucks canadian so it's not a bad price nice little knife though and anybody else got something fun to throw in uh well maybe, i can, uh, I can uh, yes i, can, I was can, waiting for it do you want me to go do you want me to go get the uh thing that you just sent me last week maybe maybe should maybe i or is that maybe not, is you that do not? i mean i mean maybe you do right, it's I up mean, to you because i don't want to put it on screen if you don't want me to put it on screen no put it on screen man it's okay. all good man right i back. did a trade with lanning i got this sweet sorry i got a sweet hinderer uh, xm18 3 you know it's it's mm. nice that's uh so at least it was a good trade right riley i didn't pay money i traded so it's actually a nice it's a nice uh this is the triway gen 6 on bearings now it's nice um so riley hold on let riley yeah let riley show off uh his option because well, i wholeheartedly support this one danger banana is back there anything anything oh yeah you know on it even the titanium is not that heavy in the pocket i mean i would that's right much prefer the g10 yeah um or the carbon fiber is even lighter that thing is oh. ridiculously light oh um, yeah it's it's small great option for shorts and you know lightweight super lightweight carry Especially, very again very fun n690 which yeah. is rush proof so if you, you well, know, this is actually d2 on this one but yeah 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 again yeah. some of them are d2 but yeah yeah luna but awesome choice and probably probably the solace is probably a pretty good choice too huh? yeah i still i'm waiting on a version to come out that i like enough to buy it again we don't have to show and tell everything we're here to talk we're exactly. here to give options drop names yeah. right oh yeah yeah, yeah. landing what do you great. got so for those of you who don't care about uh, making your payments on time at the end of the month, if you really want to go nuts, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> oh, nice. You got a Curtis dog tag. Curtis dog tag. <laughs> so this thing, this is like a micro Razel, I guess you would call it. Micro Razel, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, frame lock. It's like if the Sabenza got thrown in paint cans, right? Yeah, it's for it's for whatever you want. And it runs on. It's like bearings. if the, it's like if a CRK didn't have lock stick, but then yeah. had a really good blade. Well, look how I mean, look how thick. And that's the funny thing about these <laughs> Curtis knives. Are I mean, he makes full size knives too, but these things are yeah. um, they're wicked. And I, I actually had a tire lanyard around it because it's like I if I so. don't do that, I'm not going to be able to get to it. It's got the little flipper. So what's cool is the flipper is the lock yeah. face. So that's yeah. actually the lock face. Isn't that um, intuitive? Like, yeah, and really I actually cool. know what, believe it or not, I love this. This goes in the pocket really <laughs> easy. So you can almost just use it for, yeah. throw your pen in there. And then, you know, if you really wanted to, you just. <laughs> okay. I don't know. This thing is pretty cool. Anyway. That's it, right. This you is the a money's chunk no in the option. trunk, right? Here's the money's no option uh, choice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking yeah. of the bug out, cool. I sent it to the group chat earlier, but uh, that work sharp one looks so cool. I oh yeah amber. yeah i did see that one I, yeah I that saw amber that. color yeah i like my work I, sharps i saw that was coming out it was it was a like an advertisement by work sharp i guess i should have told you about it yeah um, I, I saw it i saw I it a couple weeks week. ago yeah. yeah i saw it about a week ago and i was like oh and then i was like i'm gonna just tell you guys because it was really nice yeah it'd be a little bit harder yeah. to get up here but you know i had i have one last one for a nice spring carry um, again, we're kind of almost covering summer too, which is whatever, right? Uh, a nice same. spring carry, something really small, really light, really <laughs> nice. N690, so it's very rust resistant, is a Spyderco Squeak. This what? isn't the fancy LMAX version. This is the Spyderco Squeak with the uh, pink FRN. So super light, slip mm -hmm. joint, but my God, I love it. It's slicey as heck because it is thin as heck too. But N690, so it's very rust resistant. Small little package, got the wire clip, which is usually pretty good from Spyderco. I had never had a problem with them. People complain a lot, um, but also a great little option for them, right? For ha having that less space, less everything. Hey, oh, there he is, Dan's here. Daniel, we got uh, DNA Hanks. Hey brother, how are we doing? Everything's good on our end, I think. Uh, we're just covering our spring carries. We're gonna see if, uh, do the boys have any other option? Well, I've got some fixed blade stuff. Um, I mean, I should do the little, um, you know, you know me, I like to carry fixed blades a lot too. And that, you know, and at the we end like, of the day- We like the, the change. Yeah, like the spring impression. is, you know, it's funny about spring, you know, people talk about lightweight carry or spring. It all depends on where you are. Up here in the Pacific Northwest, spring is like other people's fall. So, you know, you could still wear jeans and carriers, carry something a bit more heavy duty if you want. So, you know, at the end of the day, carry what makes you happy. Um, it doesn't all have to be lightweight. If you want to strap a, you know, thing around your waist, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> this little guy. What's but this? I'm sure everybody knows that those are a little... People little Vero? The, um, no, no. No. Richard Rogers. Richard Rogers. So uh, there is an affordable version, though, is there not? Yeah. Yeah, but it it's in a pond somewhere. Yes, but but give them the oh, other. The oh yeah, the they they do make a CRKT Montosa that's a little bigger. Mine <laughs> went in it somewhere. For all intents and purposes, the CRKT version is pretty good. Yeah, it is. It is right. a good knife. I I kind of I kind of you know I I, I kind of gave it a bad rap before I ever really tried it. It turned out to be a really decent knife. Yeah, but um. And then it broke with uh, misuse, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It was funny. A buddy of mine was, uh, my buddy lives up the street from me, was carrying that exact same model of knife yesterday. <laughs> he showed it to me, and that's the same thing I said to him was, I said, is that a Vero? I think it's that Fuller that kind of confuses me because I don't right, have yeah. a lot of experience with them. But yeah, yeah, yeah no, Richard Rogers, Vero he has, has the same, that he has one. Funny thing, they're both, they're both manufactured by Best Tech, though. So. Well, there oh, you go. That's yeah. the exact thing, right? So you never know. They get uh, all sorts of designs around the place. Yeah. So are we happy? Are we happy on spring carries? I think so. Yeah. yeah so what, what's what's the last topic that we wanted to cover? Well, we can go to the stove pipe. We can go to the shipping. We can go to the... Where... That's right. It is shipping. Let's cover shipping and then we'll yeah. drop your epic stove pipe review. I'm, I'm kind of excited for it. Yeah. So be fun. we did want to cover one more thing. I know we're cramming a lot into, into an episode here. We might actually end up making them slightly shorter. 
Um, so we're not cramming your brain full of stuff and goo and knowledge. And remember, um, people, this is our first one. So format's going to take shape <laughs> over the next uh, couple months, and it'll look better as we go back, as we go along. That's exactly it. We're going to get into the group, right? We've got we've got new blood. Uh, <laughs> thanks a lot, Daniel. We appreciate that. Um, so we do want to talk a little bit about shipping and being uh, mostly Canadian, landing and I. Uh, we sometimes do order from the States and having Riley in the States now, uh, he has kind of found a really good way to ship into Canada knives that could be considered um, uh, illegal at the border and Prohibited, could get yeah. seized by CBSA. So Riley want to enlighten us a little bit about what you do to get your stuff across. Well, with me, I, uh and i don't do it excessively is one of the biggest tips you don't you don't want to have every week you can have a proxy that's going to do it a certain way but you're going to pay duties you're going to do all of that but when i do it i <laughs> i usually disassemble the knife send it in two packages valued under 70 dollars a piece and labeled as a gift and I think the last time i sent you something i referred to it as a chipped blade and that's only because the wife taught me out of calling it boner medication um, right so <laughs> which would be the more for paul and, the and more the understandable was just handle it you know so um that's the easiest and, that's you the know, easiest way you know what was the funny thing i paid customs on that handle because accidentally the value was placed at 350 dollars yeah accidentally it, so because, that because does it was, because it was sent it was sent by my wife and she didn't know and the funny thing is my wife's canadian and she didn't realize that and that's kind of part of why we're doing this yes um, that's it not everybody knows how to ship back and forth yeah right she had so never she had never shipped to canada ever that's right so, even when i ship out of i'll put like, my value at 50 as gift and call it a pocket tool yeah and so that's something when i ship to the states i'll always do that and honestly, it costs a couple dollars more, but whoever you're dealing with, just tell them to, to go international priority uh, and insured for, you know, whatever, $100, $200, it's, it's, whatever okay, you want to yeah. do. And, and it doesn't matter. I mean, you can, you still put the value at 70 and you still, and there's nothing illegal about this. Because yeah, I've got I've got a friend who works at CBSA in the mailroom, and you know I work I'm a law enforcement professional as well, and we talk quite a bit. And I've asked him the question; he said they don't care. No, they, yeah, that's it's it, when it right? comes together you're kind of forcing them to do their jobs. If it's yeah. separate, they just don't care. They don't because have time they know, or they know it, it's it's nonsense. Yeah, you know? that's they, right. They There's don't, nothing they honestly illegal don't care. about shipping a blade, especially but. if I had say shipped a blade in for a warranty repair, and they're shipping it back on something that already lives inside Canada. Inter you know? International priority just seems to. It seems to a little bit of extra cash goes a long way. Yep. And that's it, the thing. It, it goes into CBSA's pocket versus it's almost like playing paying duties without paying duties sometimes, even though yeah, sometimes you'll a, get duties. It still turns out to be less. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> right. Right. You know, yeah. it turns out less than, you know, you're out $500 for a great knife. And I will tell you, you know, it's funny. I, I was sitting, I had a, every Monday I have coffee with my chief. Usually the few of us will go to Starbucks and sit around with the chief and just talk about things and i brought up last week i said uh you know he's, he was a detective and before he came on uh, with us with another agency and i said you know knives what's your what's your take and he goes cops don't care and and i said yeah. well what's actually legal in canada you know because we don't really talk about these types of things and so that was always that problem with cbsa and their shipping versus what you can and can't do in canada and the only knives that are really illegal in canada with the exception of the obvious automatic put you know switch blades ballet right. songs and gravity knives which is a very specific thing is knives that don't look like knives like a cane with a sword in it those that's types of right things, or, I, or you the, know like a lighter little ones that look like key, keys yeah yeah There's that's what's illegal one. he says we don't care if you've got a yeah exactly that's illegal here. <laughs> but they i mean but other than that if you've got a knife on you whether it's in your pocket or a clip hanging out or a sheath knife on it he goes you know know your audience i wouldn't go to a daycare with a bowie across your back like this big but you know yeah you know there's and nothing illegal about it so yeah you're not drawing attention to yourself right you're being a normal dude just you got a pocket knife big freaking deal nobody yep. really cares yep but yeah that's it that's a great uh great point on top of the shipping stuff too yep. you know and as long as we're not trying to ship uh, otfs and stuff across i mean they really won't care 
and if and if you're shipping and if you're shipping a blade do yourself a favor and just wrap it up really decent tape it to the inside of the box if you can um don't have it shifting around so there's no piece of tape of it coming out you know well, no i mean he i when i got it from riley it, it was almost like um when you buy a kitchen knife or something, it's like the the cardboard's on it and kind of the table yeah. attached to the blade, right? So dude, I know really... you played hell getting that that pouch open. Oh yeah, he uh, <laughs> he had fun taping it up, right? Uh, I had to a... ship a uh, Bark River in for work. Yeah, I just took a uh, toilet paper. You know, once it's done, you got just the, the cardboard, cardboard roll. Oh. I just sliced it down the middle and wrapped it around the blade, and taped it. Yeah, yeah. So it works well, right? And but yeah, you, I mean, you take your and, time and ship it properly. And, tape is your friend tape it till yeah. it floats and sure. then tape it again prepare yeah, for you don't want it shifting cutting anything right? and if you have to shove peanut butter pies inside of there for um for packing material because it works <laughs> a and little bit of extra and then the person's like not left with a bunch of packing peanuts and then you they just got snacks around in there then they they have delicious snacks to give their annoying daughter <laughs> so. yeah it's a uh, it's great tips from from going states to canada that's it's invaluable information for a lot of people nowadays because we do search and sometimes we come up in the states right if you can get a proxy that's going to do it or get the guy himself that will do that yeah that's the way you want to try to do it right u.s yeah. priority and um, make friends with americans that's exactly it friends. right and you if know? it's a fixed blade <laughs> don't even worry about it because that's right just don't care yeah yeah as long as it doesn't look friggin crazy i'm sure they won't even yeah. blink an eye i mean no, yeah. even if it does look crazy i'm yeah. sure they won't even care the funny like, thing ah, is it's one of those ones in, uh, put on a wall where i was in canada i was buying from south carolina you know and now yeah. i'm back in south carolina and i'm buying stuff from combat oh that's so it. like you know it's back and forth so it goes both yeah. ways that's for sure yeah <laughs> You guys, I don't know if you can hear my kids. I'm sorry, they're screaming in the background. So well, tell you what, then. let's let's get the the stovepipe review, and then maybe right. we'll uh, we'll see how she does for calling it a day. We'll we'll see what we end yeah. up with. So on a oh. whim. So part of this, I just want to say, I, I am a Spyderco fan in that I'm, I'm not like where my entire collection obviously surrounds that because I've got kind of a little bit of everything. Um, I'm I'm a fan, but I don't like all of their knives. Um, this one, when I saw it released, I was immediately intrigued um, because the whole Gangs of New York um, stovepipe, just so people understand, is not about a jammed shell in your chamber. It's about uh, the type of hat that they wore back in the early 19th century. Um, so build a butcher who was the character in yes. the Gangs of New York, um, I guess inspired David Rybaum to make his build a butcher. Uh, model and uh, back in 2010, I actually found this on the Spyderco forums. I would have prepared and posted this for to put on the screen if I was a little bit smarter than I am. But hey, we he, had, I, he, he was later. posting about uh, putting the build a butcher model together with a spider hole, and Sal gave him essentially the the blessing to do that and said, "Let us know how it goes." And that was 2010. So now we actually have a model, and so obviously this has been something that had been ongoing for a long time. Um, so for people who don't know, I mean, most people know who Spyderco is, but David Rybaum's out of um, Oregon, and he has his brand is uh, Kingdom Armory. And uh, this is a, from what I can see from the online photos and from the forum stuff that I actually dug into and in reviews of the original, this is a faithful recreation of his Build a Butcher. I mean, almost one-to-one. -one. Um, I would say not even almost one-to-one. -one. This is one-to-one. -one. If you look at the they, original, they this really is exactly... Yeah, yeah, no, if you awesome. look at the original, even the finishing on this, I mean, it's like, this is exact. The it's materials just like the McBee, used, the McBee from McNeese, yep. same. They really want to bring the customs to the people. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously they used uh, 20 CV in this, which I don't yeah. believe was available back in 2010, but I, oh, I'm no. not 100 percent sure. So anyway, what we have here is we have we have a morphed Sabenza. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we have uh, we have, a, and they're not very large, if you can see in my hand. I have a, like a medium large glove size hand. We have um some really thick oh, 6alv4 yeah. titanium and it is beautifully crowned so what a lot of people don't understand because they look at the price and they start freaking out but they don't really understand kind of what's gone into this um the handles here are crowned you have no machining marks whatsoever um and, and they're just really nice it's like a palm swell on both sides yeah, and even the contour very well even where the clip is contoured into the, it's a milled clip and it's contoured into the scale, which is beautiful. Nice. Um, you've got um, specific 
hardware to this knife, which if you know like Spider Coffee or Benchmade, you look at these companies, they kind of use the same screws on their entire line, unless it's like a very special thing. Um, so again, we talk about price on these knives. We have hardware that was specifically made for this knife. So you're starting to change up uh, when you go to like Tai Chung or these places, they have to have a specific assembly line for more than just a blade shape and a handle shape. Now they're talking about hardware that they're using. So there's a lot of things that go into the prices of this knife that I think people fail to realize. Um, the type of machining that's done on here, um, we can just look at the way the handle is. There's no sharp edges or what I would consider sharp edges. Everything is very, very purposely done. There's nothing on here that feels like it was done on accident. Um, the blade finish, even though you have titanium into, sorry about that, you can't see it, titanium into steel, they've tried to keep the finish consistent. So you have, I mean, the steel is a little bit brighter, um, yeah. but you have that same almost what they consider, I, I don't want to say working finish because that's a hinder thing, but it's it's literally <laughs> like it's a, uh, it's like they sandblasted it and then tumbled, media blasted, I don't know what, how they would have done it, Tumble, tumbled it to stonewash yeah. it and then blasted it. You have the maker's mark on the other side, which I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then very little branding. You know, it says right here in subdued, it says Tai Chung, Taiwan, which for people that are not uh, versed is not China. So stop saying that the knife is made in China. Um, and CPM 20 CV on this side and then uh, Spyderco. Then you have Spyderco on one side and you have the maker's mark on the other. Um, this hump on the back, which a lot of people seem to be polarized on. They say it's a screwdriver. Um, actually, um, David Rybom says that that's a glass breaker. Now, I've not tried to break glass with it. I'm sure it's capable. I don't know how you would hold it. I don't know if it's where you hold it closed like this. I don't know. That's what I would understand. Like a rock. But you can, <laughs> but I mean, you can use it as a scraper. Um, the cool thing about this, uh, some folks have talked about like how comfortable this would be in the hand. Um, it's, it's pretty intuitive. It gives you, you know, this whole area, this area, and then you have it on the pinky here. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I've got medium, large gloved hand and I've got a little bit of the hand allowed. I, I don't need to go back here because my hand fits right here. And then you can choke up and put your thumb on top. I like that. I like the choke right? up. And I've right. taken down quite a few boxes with this. Um, I, I don't normally like, I'm not like one of these guys. If I can rip something over my hands, I don't immediately go to my knife. I'm not the stereotypical like knife obsessive. I use yeah. knives when I really need them. Um, so they don't get a lot of use in my life um, unless it's like seriously needed, but I like to carry them, which is why I always have one on me. But yeah, um, I've taken on quite a few cardboard boxes. If you think about it, what's nice about this design is when you're push cutting, um, your all the stress goes into your thumb versus, well, the pivot on this thing is huge, but uh, it's very smart um, the way they made these. Also, if you look at the lock, there's been question about why there's no lock bar insert. And yeah. what I'll tell you um, is um, Sal and Eric and Chris Reeve go back they're friends they're actually friends and that's why you know if you look at any of the spider codes that have the uh frame lock he actually calls it an ril because spider code yeah. does the right thing about giving homage where it belongs so he actually yeah. says reeve integral lock versus frame lock um if the angles are done right um you don't need a lock bar insert lock bar inserts are great i'm not going to bash them i've got a hinder i got an xam 18 coming on monday i you know I, I i don't have a problem with lock bar inserts but what it allows a maker to do is to say oh the geometry is not right this knife's not locking up properly around final assembly they can take the insert off they can regrind it or put a new one and start over versus making an entire lock face yeah. so if you think about it making a proper um frame uh reeve integral lock or frame lock without the insert is more work um you have to have your angles proper you have to make sure that your contacts on the bottom not across the entire face to prevent that lock rock um there's there's a lot that goes into making a knife like this and you know some people will balk at the price well maybe the knife's not right for you um you know right. it doesn't mean that the performance isn't there but this thing is heavy it's burly um I, i've carried it for a couple weeks now i've used it quite extensively it's an awesome awesome knife i i say look if you got the money kicking around and it's not gonna hurt you too much get one um because this is gonna i think this is gonna be one of those knives that spider could just continues in a year or two and then everybody's gonna be looking for one and it could probably be worth a lot more than what they are now so anyway uh there you go
that reminds me a lot of uh, how the bombshell was, right? I'm not yep. a big fan of it either, but mm. it became a cult favorite among Spider Co boys. Yeah, uh, the danger pickle or whatever. Yeah, the danger pickle or whatever. And there's yeah. there's an unboxing video that has a disassembly uh, reviewer did, and I, I watched it. This thing is expertly, masterfully put together. I mean, everything is milled like, and this is the tolerance. This is essentially like Chris Reed could make this. This is how good this They've is. They've said that about the Tai Chung factory a lot. Is that they really yeah, do? Yeah, I mean, even the even so. stop him. You're looking at this thing. Is, I mean. I mean, everything no, on this not, knife is everything on this knife is extremely well anyway. thought out, very purposely done, and I see the price in it. I, I I played with it in the store. I bought a different knife, and then I couldn't stop thinking about it for like two days. I went right back and bought it. It's this is yeah. So for those of you who have been like, I don't know, yeah, this is this is the real. Don't deal. don't wait on it. Is what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, don't think of it as a spider code. That's whatever this price is. Wherever you're watching this video, you think it's going to drop. Is, you're waiting for it to drop in price. It's not. No, yeah, of. no, this is going to go up in price. I don't think there's yeah. going to be a drop in price. Um, yeah, and, and you know what? It's hard when you look at the persistence and you look at the, you know, the the, the lightweights that are a hundred dollars. And then but the we're thing looking is, at these that. are this production is not customs. That. These are production yeah. customs, and that's why they're more money. They're and made you, to spec and, of that maker. And if you go to the Kingdom Armory uh, page, if you go to his Instagram, he's got a bunch of these from Spyderco. These taken apart and anodizing and regrinding and doing stuff, and they're eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars. That's it. McNeese did the same thing with the McBee. He would. It makes it easier them, right? on the maker to do almost a mid tech version. Uh, I wouldn't call this mid tech because um, I'd still call this production. But I'm just saying, um, stop. You know, Spyderco Co could almost have made another brand like they did with bird they could have made something yeah a little bit, their... like recluse you know like maybe like the, the recluse, recluse yes recluse and they could have almost made another brand for this and i think people would have been more receptive because it says spider co on it but um and, but they've upped the game it's the top tier so make it i almost make a new brand for these you're not you're gonna start seeing more production of this type of thing i think anyway that's uh yeah i don't want to get too long in the tooth here Riley, riley's probably vomiting in his mouth looking at this but uh <laughs> if you if I you want spider something go. special <laughs> this is the one i have a spider anyway. code that one. Oh, it's a native. Who gave you that? Weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boy, I use it though. I mean, I'm not saying. Yeah, I don't. yeah, I you mean, use I... it. You use it by keeping your case open with it. You jam it open so you can play with all your other Sometimes. knives. That's only every now and again. <laughs> that's that's pretty rare though. Gentlemen, I think it was. Uh, I think that was a good show. Yeah. You know, we've got a, we got a good time. We got we appreciate uh, the diehards coming back and taking a look. You know, uh, it's a new show, new format. We're learning the ropes, uh, running the show, and uh, don't be surprised if we do things a little bit differently. That's right. The These boys are new, and and they're learning the ropes, and everybody's learning the ropes. And, and if you want to see something that we're not doing, any suggestions? I mean, we might not pay any attention to you, but don't hesitate to comment on it because, you know, we don't know either. We're just uh, <laughs> starting. So, well, yeah, that's the, the whole, whole triple thing, unboxing right? came to us from a from a, somebody that's been watching the show for a while. So, I mean, yeah. it's. Well, that's um, it. We've had long-term viewers, you know, that that sent us that that, that yeah. knife, and uh, and it was greatly appreciated. And we're going to give a review on that come yeah. next show. Yeah, absolutely. Or, so know, that's what we, so the goal here is. Uh, in addition to whatever we're doing, we're going to carry this until at least next show, right? That's absolutely. right. So I have we, a feeling we, this at least, is going to go way beyond week, that, but <laughs> at least a week solid in the pocket. That's what I do in the truck. I carry one knife for the week. So I'm just looking I, at this, my initial impression, I think this, this I think I'm going to be carrying this quite a bit more than just a week. <laughs> that thing's yeah, awesome. It, it looks slicey as hell. Like I'm going to go yeah. downstairs and start playing with dinner with this thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, so we, we got the James brand Folsom. And we are not that, connected to this brand in any way. I just want to put this nope, out there. This, this nope, was not, not sent to us by anybody from James brand. No, no so they yeah. just got lucky. That yep, somebody we got three uh, of these. all individual <laughs> looking beautiful knives. From a uh, gracious, very gracious, very generous viewer. And so we appreciate that. And uh, <clears throat> we'll be reviewing this come next show. And uh, we hope everybody joins up on the Facebook group, IBEDC, on Facebook there. Again, Facebook group. Yeah, I said that. Uh, again, we were live on YouTube. We're live on Twitch TV now. And we have Facebook on my page right now. Just uh, working on getting the group caught up to be able to run live videos. Uh, if you do have any questions or comments, I mean, don't hesitate to hit us up. However, yep. you need to. I mean, so uh, here you're really welcome. Yep. And uh, what do we do? Do we just stare awkwardly at the screen and like fade out? How do we get out of here, boys? I'm, I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm, stuck. I feel like I'm on a date. You don't know how to leave now. 
Uh, it was good. I will talk. Uh, here's my number. Uh, so do we go to your house? There's only or mine? three digits. What are you doing? <laughs> it's so, like okay boys, then. <laughs> I appreciate you. Great first show. Uh, you know we're only gonna get better from here. We appreciate everybody that popped in and did comment today. Gentlemen, any words? Uh. No, do we want to uh, oh, stop forward. broadcasting, stay in, and say hi, talk a minute? Or That's we... the normal. You don't have okay. to. You know, with that after show's normal. I don't friend. know. Yeah, don't worry about it. All this right, everybody. Uh, we appreciate it, and we're going to see ourselves out, and we hope to see you next time. Please do join the Facebook group, IBEDC, the International Brotherhood of Everyday Carry. I've been One Knife Paul. Lanny. And Raleigh. And we will catch you next time on The Knivesmen.